We have new staffing requests. Um, the all-day kindergarten at Maple Street would be a full person is what we need. We have two full-time kindergarten teachers there now. Um, our community school coordinator, I included that. That started last April and we used $11,000 worth of tutoring uh, funding for that. Uh, we need to increase that. We did not increase that this year uh, as, as we should have. That would happen well after our budget passed last year. And so we did put that in. Um, we are uh, spending that this year, but it is, has not been in the budget. So um, that's the after school program coordinator that we have. Uh, Northeast School, one and a half kindergarten teachers. We have one and a half now, so we would be adding to that to make three full sections there. Vernon Center Middle School, looking to add point two, which is one section of family and community uh, consumer science. So that's, um, I think at the middle school we do sewing and uh, all kinds of good stuff over there. Uh, it's a wonderful program. Uh, at the high school, if, if you've looked, and I, I know Ms. Goldich has looked at, at equity, um, if you look across uh, the district at our high school, especially in music, we have far fewer music teachers than we do in the middle school. Um, and so we're looking to increase, we have a 0.8 vocal music, this would increase it to 1.0 vocal music. And um, art would also in, uh, increase, that would be an increase over what we have now, another 0.2 art. Um, you know what our students produce just by looking around the room, and uh, our students are, uh, it's a pretty incredible department. An alternative learning teacher, um, the high school would like this. Um, this is extended learning as well, so we're looking to add a teacher here for that program. This would be someone who would probably come in at 9 in the morning, work with students through the last three blocks of the day, uh, every day, so that would be six out of eight blocks, but also would stay until about 4 in the afternoon and would be able to provide um, tutoring and uh, NovaNet experience or whatever online experience they could. This can be for both remediation and uh, credit recovery as well as um, going ahead if they were looking at uh, doing some distance learning. We have a, a new distance learning lab in our entrepreneurial lab that is, is set up but not ready to go yet. It's very exciting. In fact, when we uh, have our meeting at the high school, that's one of the areas I'd love the board to, uh, to see. The, um, our uh, athletic director has asked for um, two additional coaches, an assistant football coach and a freshman girls volleyball coach. Our, um, our football team has gone from the 20s up to 43 this year, so we do have enough students for a varsity and a JV, um, and then even possibly some freshman work uh, next year, so they're, they're hoping to continue to, to build that. And the volleyball, the volleyball, we have 36 students, 13 of them freshmen. So our coach, Kim Meriden, usually takes the freshman girls after school for a couple of hours, then does JV, and then does varsity. And so she's coaching for six hours a day, uh, these kids, and, and does it, uh, you know, she's, she's really not getting paid to coach three teams, and that's, that's what it's all about. Um, but that also builds her program, and so it would be certainly uh, very helpful and very good for the kids if they had uh, their own coach for the freshmen. High schools also asked for an additional security guard. We really have one. Um, we have one security guard and one uh, paraprofessional who acts as uh, security. And so they are looking for another security guard. It's a huge building. There's over 150 doors, um, access points to that building, and, uh, and they feel that this would make the building be a much more secure place. Um, benefits for these people, I was looking at um, because many of the, uh, the part-time people listed here already have benefits, so I only included benefits for uh, a couple of the positions, and that would uh, just around uh, $50,000, that included health benefits. So all of these new staffing requests is about two-thirds of a percent of an increase in our budget. Ms. Goldich. And you said the addition of the point two music staff brings that position to one. What does the addition of the point two art staff bring staffing to? Just going to look here. Okay. Um, let me see. We have a person. We have two people right now who are point two. Mrs. Goldberg, who's teaching one class, and uh, Ms. Rebecca, who is teaching one class and acting as a um, a substitute for the rest of the day, um, getting paid a substitute rate. And so this would allow her to add one more class because of the, uh, the number of people. I'm, I'm going to say five and, five and a half, this would bring it to 5.6. Okay. 
It was high school. I'm sorry. Ted, can you count? Yeah. Jason, do you remember? I'm sorry, I don't have that with me. We take a break. I can go. I can get it. 4.8? Four point eight. Four point eight. Okay. No, that would make it 4.8. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, the alternative learning teacher, you explained what that person would be doing. Can you tell me how many students that would impact? Um, I'm not doing, Mr. Bame, I don't think was able to stay this evening. Um, it could be up to 20, uh, and it would be at different points in the year. So you might have a student uh, who's short credits, who's going to work after school to regain a credit they lost as a freshman so they can graduate with their class. Um, you might have students during the day who are working in a different, uh, a different manner, um, doing independent studies with this person. So it, it, I'm guessing around 20 altogether over the course of a year. Uh, technology, and I will tell you, even though this is just about three quarters of a million dollars, this is um, quite pared down. Um, Mr. Lemoy is uh, very excited and very aggressive about making sure we have uh, what, we're, what we need. Um, our Town Data Processing Enterprise Fund, I put in an increase of about $560,000. That's a, a placeholder. I think it's a reasonable placeholder. Um, we have a brand new uh, network throughout the town, a fiber network. We have joined staff, as you can see in the second line. Um, I show you the, the reduced staff that uh, now is being paid through the town. So there was a, a savings on our side there that is transferred to the data processing uh, fund. But there is a lot of work. We are very uh, behind in technology as a town and as a school system. So um, there is a lot of work to be done to make sure that our kids are ready for the world. Um, but we're not looking for pie in the sky. We're just looking to make sure that they are ready to, uh, to be uh, literate in technology as they, as they leave us. Um, smart boards, I thought that said 14. Um, I think it's supposed to say 14. I apologize. Um, that, oh, no, it isn't 16. I apologize. You're right. 16 smart boards, and that's to four different schools. And that's to ensure that each of our schools has at least 10 smart boards in it. So we're trying to do a little equity there. There are other schools that already have many more than uh, 10 smart boards. And that would depend in the past years on what they, the principal has uh, had to move forward. So that, that makes sure that at least every school has at least 10 smart boards. Replacement computers, we have many uh, computers, as you know, that are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 years old. Um, these, are, these would be uh, teacher computers or classroom computers. We would be replacing computers with laptops, and there are 52, and those are detailed in the, the dance floor uh, version of your, in your binder. PD360, um, this is something that we were fortunate enough to uh, be able to purchase for this year. It is an uh, online resource. It has videos teachers can watch about classroom management, constructivist classroom, um, engaging students in learning, authentic learning, all kinds of things. Another, a couple of other pieces to this are that um, they have an area where you can um, put teacher evaluation in and you know that next year we have to have some way of tracking teacher evaluation uh, in, in technology. So PD360 has been, uh, we think, a marvelous tool and resource for all of our teachers. Uh, we have set out benchmarks every month, and I think Mr. Morazzo shared this earlier with you. But um, we've set out benchmarks every month as to how far the teachers need to be. Many of them are much further than that. At the end of September, we want to make sure they can log on and open a video uh, of any kind. Um, we then, at this point in the year, they need to have uh, logged on and watched several videos and responded because there are reflective questions at the end of the videos. We have access to that, so we have access to the reflections, we have access to the number of teachers who have been on, how long each one has been on, by name, um, and so how much they've engaged in. And it's, um, so we're building this as a, a, as a tool and a resource, and you know, we need opportunities for our teachers to grow. <coughs> Student management system, uh, we have a system called IPASS. We are one of two districts in the state of Connecticut using IPASS. Um, there were three until a year ago, and that uh, third district decided to uh, go another route. So there are only uh, two. 
Uh, it is not uh, very conducive to Connecticut reporting, so that's one thing, but it is also not very friendly. We are asking teachers to collect data and to look at that data constantly. And it's everything they can do to just input the data. It is very, very difficult for them to export data, to look at reports, to determine, and, and decide how is that going to inform my instruction. So we're asking them to do things that are pretty impossible to do. So we're looking at a new student management system. Um, we did get a quote in order to put a placeholder here. We haven't gone out to bid or anything, but we did get a quote um, actually from Power School, which is the program that more than 100 districts in the state of Connecticut have. And we thought that would be a good place to start. Um, it's a pretty good one. It was 74,000 something, so I put in 75,000. Um, the, so the student management system, and that's, um, that is very key for us in moving forward. I grouped the rest of these um, together. Um, it's $32,000. Uh, classroom LCDs, that's uh, five per school. This would be to connect a teacher's computer with the LCD, so the teacher and students, because most of our teachers, once they do their attendance, students are allowed to use their computer. It's the only computer in the classroom. So they use it for presentations, they use it to look things up, uh, et cetera. So they, um, the classroom, the replacement uh, computers would be used also by students. Um, so the LCDs would be used to connect the computer to uh, the overhead projector so that you can uh, display what's on your, such as this, um, what's on your computer. So students who are giving the presentations or looking things up or teachers who are um, showing a partial video, whatever it is, um, they'll be able to do that. And this, again, is it's an equity issue, and it's also trying to move everyone into the 21st century. Document cameras, that's two per school. Document cameras are a camera that kind of acts like a, an opaque projector, if you remember what those are. It's an overhead projector that actually takes a picture of whatever's on the paper. And so the document camera could show the teacher uh, dissecting the frog. It could show whatever the teacher has on the piece of paper, whatever something from a book. It can show anything. So that's another uh, technology um, to move teachers and, uh, and students into uh, the 21st century. E-readers, um, 35 of them are for the high school, for the special reading program at the high school. We did move a reading person up there a year ago, uh, so a year before this. And that person is um, looking to, uh, to use e-readers to increase student reading. <clears throat> Excuse me. We found that um, students are reading a little more if they have an e-reader as opposed to um, a, a just reading a book. So personally, I love my books, but I do have an e-reader as well. Um, the others are uh, five per school. The, uh, that's 35 of them. The other 35 are five per school um, for each library, and that's to do exactly the same thing. So the 35 at, at the high school are for the reading program for our struggling readers, and the other um, five in each of the schools would be to um, provide students with that opportunity to use e-readers uh, in their schools. <coughs> me. The website uh, camera. This is a good camera. I think it's uh, just about $1,500, including the lens. And again, I, we do have the details for you. Um, right now, Mr. Lemoy is using his own personal camera for our website. So he's going and taking pictures. Anytime we need something, he shows up at an event. Um, it's very nice of him. Uh, I don't think that's um, part of his job to do um, that and to, uh, to take the pictures and to use his um, personal camera for them. Although he says he's, he's fine if we can't get it. Um, this camera that we're looking at also has high definition, high definition video. And so we would be able to use that for the videos that we are putting on the website. Uh, I think Mrs. Morasso and I are up in another week to replace our videos. We try to do those monthly. Uh, Chromebook cards, this is 25 cloud computing laptops. So this would start to get more um, computers in the, in the high school. And they are uh, not as expensive. I think the Chromebooks come up to about $8,500 um, for the whole 25 of them. So go, all of those together is uh, $32,000, and you can see that in terms of technology, we're at about 714 of an increase, which is just about 1.5% increase. It's a huge, um, a huge increase. Um, when you, uh, we did not remove anything except to put zeros in the, uh, in the budget, I think. I'll have to double check that. <clears throat> 